for those of you who have been attending regularly, you'll see that there's a new word on our board. This evening we will be speaking about obedience, but before we get into that, I'll recap for our first-time visitors. We started this year, this is a, our, our new chapter has been about purpose. We know that up to now that we've been born on purpose, with a purpose, and that this purpose was designed millions of years ago before we were even thought of by our parents. Our key scripture has been Jeremiah 1 verse 5, which says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This scripture is as relevant as it was to Jeremiah as it is to us. God knows us. He knew us before we were born, and he has given us a purpose for this time. We also discussed the importance of having a relationship with the purpose giver and making time to spend time with him in the quiet place. So like I mentioned, we will be speaking about obedience this evening. It's so easy for us to fall into a cycle of work, eat, sleep, repeat. That is our daily struggle. For some people, unlike me, you add traffic to that. I don't have that struggle. For those of us who love our jobs, it's even easier to, to fall into this cycle, but it's a very strip, slippery slope when it starts. We immerse ourselves into our jobs and say, oh yes, this is my purpose, such a time as this, God knows I'm supposed to spend more than half my day thinking about work, dreaming about work, preparing for work, even though I should be spending time with family, with him. We say that we're living our purpose, yet we become so automatic that we're not actually making a difference. We're simply going with the flow. So this is how it goes with everything we're involved in. I say work, but it can also apply to many other things, like studying, serving at church, joining Bible school, whatever you get involved in. We start so excited, full of life, motivated, ready to just achieve and go over and above to make sure that everything works out for this thing that we get involved in. Eventually, however, after a few months or years, however it works for you, these feelings fade. And we start feeling so empty, lost, and despondent. We begin to ask, what's the point? Why do I get into my car every morning to sit in 30 minutes of traffic just to go to this place that drains my life? What is the point of it? Is there a point? We start questioning, and then we start thinking, oh, no, this is part of Christian living. It's the wilderness experience. Yet we're not even living at all. We are just full of the same cycle over and over and over. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but if I ask if this has happened to you before, I'm pretty sure some of us would raise our hands, if not all. Some of us may even be in that place this evening. But the solution to this is obedience. There's a man named Simon, later known as Peter, who was one of Jesus' disciples later on in his life. He was in the same position when Jesus came across his path. He was a fisherman. So he would spend most of his days on a lake, in his boat, with his net in the water. Some days, like with us, it's productive, there's lots of fish, he can go home and enjoy some time with his family. Other days, he would spend the whole day, probably into the night, waiting for at least one or two fish so that there's dinner. Same thing like us. We can go to work and have great days, and then we can also have not so great days. So one day, Jesus, this mysterious teacher, the healing teacher comes past and steps into his boat and says, please, you know, let's go further into the water. I'm teaching some people. They need to all see me. In Luke 5, verse 4, uh, verse, verse 4 and 5, it says, When he had finished speaking, he went down to Simon and said, Put out your nets into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything, but... Because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, there's three key things that, have hap that happen in Simon Peter's response. The first, thing, the first thing that he did was acknowledge Jesus as his master. He didn't say, yes, I will go. He made sure he mentioned that Jesus is his master. He elevated him to the point where he needed to be. You see, the, the personal outcome of following someone's instructions depends on the relationship you have with the person giving the instruction. Now, instructions are part of our everyday life, but it's about personal growth and reaching your destiny through your purpose, going through the process of obeying people's instructions. It's life, unfortunately. 
Now, if the person who gave you the instruction is somebody that you value, your partner, a pastor, your boss, your parent, your sibling, for example, you will go over and above to make sure that what they've asked you to do is to the best of your ability. You've done everything to make sure it's up to their standard. In return, you will then benefit internally and, of course, externally. At work, you will get promoted, for example. But you will learn also to submit to the people you are supposed to submit to. On the other hand, though, if it is somebody that you don't particularly get on with, or even somebody as that, that society deems less than, who asks you to do a task, if you even do it, you'll probably just do it so it can be done and you can move on with the more important things in life. Your, your core job, your core module, you're just trying to get this out of the way. You will then not learn what you are supposed to. You will not grow in the area you are supposed to if you just quickly try and get it over and done with. So after um, Jesus asked him to let down his nets, um, Simon Peter then goes on having a good relationship with Jesus and becomes a fisher of men. He was elevated because he acknowledged who Jesus was and then began to start walking in relationship with him. Like I said, we, we spent uh, the uh, last few weeks speaking about having a relationship with the purpose giver. And this was the moment when Simon Peter began to have this relationship with Jesus. When we get born again, that is when we start to have the relationship with Jesus. So when he says, go this way, we're supposed to say, Master, I'm tired, but I will go this way. If Peter hadn't acknowledged Jesus as master, but just brushed him off like the Pharisees, he never would have walked with Jesus and never fulfilled his purpose. He would have stayed a fisherman for the rest of his life. Not elevated, not moving forward, just being ordinary, and we are more than that. The second important thing that happened is that Simon Peter acknowledged how he felt. He said, Master, we've worked all night and have caught nothing. Now I'm sure that he wanted to just go home and sleep. I know I would have, if I was just on a boat all night and nothing came, I would have wanted to go home. You see, the thing is, with our feelings, it's okay. It's okay to say, I'm tired. It's okay to say, I've been doing this. It's okay to say, I'm tired of traffic. I'm tired of not getting the right responses. I'm tired of this promotion passing me. It's okay to acknowledge how you feel. But you cannot stay there. You cannot stay in the trap of your feelings and say, this is why I am the way that I am. You can't also blame them and say, no, because of the way I feel, I will only listen to pastor so-and-so and not, oh, this other person. You need to acknowledge your feelings, but also deal with them. So if you're tired, you're demotivated, you're not interested, it's important to acknowledge how you feel, but you need to work through it so that the cycle does not continue. Because if you don't, then you just have something more to complain about, sitting in traffic, feeling like you're exhausted. So like I said, your, your feelings, it's not, it's not a trap or a death sentence. You are not stuck to feeling exhausted, to feeling demotivated. Acknowledge them, but also do something about it. Move on. You can't keep complaining about how stuck your job is if you are not doing anything about it. Imagine one day you, you're seeing God at the pearly gates and he said, you know what? You did not fulfill your purpose. You didn't reach your destiny because all you told me was that you were tired. It's not going to work out. The last thing that's important is that is when Peter or Simon Peter said the word but. You see, this is where everything changed. He acknowledged God as, as Jesus' master, which is perfect. He told him how he felt, which is perfect. But if it just ended there, nothing was going to change. He decided then to put aside the way he felt and then carried on and moved forward to um, fulfilling his purpose in the long run. If he just stopped after telling Jesus that he tried to fish all night, nothing would have happened, even though he recognized Jesus as his master. You see, this is where a lot of us fall short. We say, we come to church, we come to the collective, God, we love you, we're praying for this new thing, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, and then you go back to work tomorrow, you sit in your traffic, and you do nothing. See, Simon Peter spent all night um, with his net in the water. 
only for Jesus to tell him to go again. He didn't say, no, try a new lake. Let's go, there's another lake just further up. We're gonna try there. He didn't tell him, you know, maybe fishing is not for you. Come, join me, I'm a carpenter. We can make some wooden things together. He literally said, try again, but this time with me in the boat. You see, in order for us to go from purpose to destiny, we need to have intimacy and relationship. Only then will the obedience part of it actually be fruitful. Because if I tell you to stand up, you're gonna stand, but you're not even gonna wonder why. If you know that it's part of a message or it's part of an illustration or it's part of a greater good, your chair is not really stable and I'm trying to save you, then you would actually have fruitful obedience. Because if you just decided to sit down, you would fall and hurt yourself. See, like I said, Jesus is saying, try again, but with me. And he's saying that to us as well. You will get there. Everything that we are working towards in life, every single day, every minute in traffic, every meeting that you have to attend that you really would rather be doing something else, is getting us towards the greater purpose in life. So at this moment, you may feel like there's no point. But Jesus is saying, try again, but with me in the boat. Like I mentioned at the beginning, um, Jeremiah 1 verse 5 has been our core scripture. If you read further on, when Jesus, uh, after Jesus calls Jeremiah, he gives him an instruction in verse 7. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. So yes, we have been called the same way Jeremiah was called. But God is giving an instruction to say, you must go where I call you to go. And it is up to us to acknowledge him as master, to recognize and acknowledge our feelings, but to obey what he's saying. To back this up, because Jesus was already performing miracles in the New Testament, in the Old Testament not so much, because Jesus wasn't there yet, God then showed Jeremiah a vision of an almond tree, and he explains why in verse 12. The Lord said to me, this is Jeremiah speaking, I have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So not only has God given us an instruction, but he's watching. He's making you go through whatever you've gone through and whatever you're going through, but he's watching, you're not alone. He hasn't left you, but he's making sure that you are obeying every single step so that you reach the destiny. You walk in your purpose listening and obeying to what he's saying. So, we need to continuously be spending time with God in our quiet place, listening to what he's saying, so that we can obey. If that's hard, start with the Bible, follow the, the principles. If you don't like to tithe, it's an, it's an instruction, start small. You don't wanna spend time with God, start with the Old Testament, start small, get a reading plan, because only then when you obey what God is telling you directly, will you walk in the purpose that you have been destined for, not the person next to you. So like I, like I mentioned earlier, everything that we are going through, everything we've been through, everything that from school, from preschool when you were coloring, has prepared you for this moment, this night, the 19th of February, 2020. God is going to do something amazing, but we need to acknowledge him, acknowledge our feelings, but obey what he's saying to you personally so that you can stop doing little ordinary fishing and fish for men the way we are called to. We may be tired, it's life. We're tired, we feel like we're on this constant loop, cycle, 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 but the important thing is to simply remember we must try again, but with Jesus in the boat.